Our next speaker is Eric Chang. Uh, Eric's a photographer whose work has always lived at the intersection of art and science. Um, when I first met Eric, I knew him from doing amazing underwater photography. But over the last five years, he's explored a, a different kind of frontier. He's going to come up and talk about that uh, this evening. Come on up, Eric. So I had this um, really kind of beautiful philosophical introduction planned, and it was, I was going to talk about this story arc about technology going into creativity and how it's a really cool intersection and stuff. But then I only have like 10 minutes, so I'm going to skip all that stuff and uh, tell you about drones. So drones, and specifically drones and volcanoes, a really uh, wonderful mix. Um, about a year ago, I, uh, through a really bizarre sequence of events, I found myself in Iceland in front of this erupting volcano. And the goal was, was to fly, uh, fly drones over the volcano and to capture footage from a perspective um, that no one had ever seen. And some of you may know this first story. This is from September of last year. Um, and uh, during one of those flights, my, the camera melted, the GoPro on the, on the drone. And, and I actually used that camera to fly because that's you know, my, my point of view during these live flights. Um, and so I had to ask the, this, this is a DJI Phantom 2, I had to ask it to come home, which luckily it did, and, um, and that's why this footage survived. So first I'm going to show you this very early footage, and then we'll move on from there. Let me get the lights. So some of you have probably seen that before. You're probably thinking, yeah, I saw that, whatever. Um, and actually, when I came back from that trip, uh, I, I went on the Still Untitled podcast with uh, Adam, Will, and Norm and talked about how I did it. And the, the video actually went viral. It, it I don't know, had like 1.4 million views, which was, which was pretty cool. Um, and that's not the end of the story. You know, you'd think it, it's a pretty small niche, you know, drone volcano photography. And, um, but something really cool happened, and that's that... Good Morning America called, and this is in January of this year, and I, they had seen this video of drones flying over volcanoes. Um, I'd also done a live broadcasts from the air, these experiments in live aerial broadcasts from drones. I ended up going to Burning Man, and I did uh, drone, uh, live drone streaming uh, on their Ustream channel, um, and all of that sort of came together, and the, and the idea was that maybe we could go back to Iceland, to this volcano, which was still erupting, and, and do it live. Um, but this is January, and this is what Iceland looks like in January. So it was a very different kind of trip. Um, and strangely enough, two weeks later, I was, I was there again. Um, and it looked, it looked very different this time. Uh, of course, everything was white, except for this melted area of black lava around the volcano. By now, the, this, uh, the lava flow there uh, was about the size of Manhattan. And it was pretty big, and it was absolutely gorgeous. And of course, the technology had changed too. You know, drones are kind of being revved twice a year uh, these days in just an incredibly fast cycle. Um, and a lot of the technical issues we had, which are in that still entitled podcast, just went away. Um, and so we were able to do these really amazing flights. Now, I brought another pilot with me named Ferdinand from uh, Germany, an amazing pilot. And what we did was we flew two at the same time. So this video, I'm going to talk over this video a little bit, even though there's dramatic music as well. Um, so what we did is we flew simultaneously. So Ferdinand is piloting uh, the, the quadcopter in the back. It's DJI Inspire 1. And I'm piloting the one in the front. 
And the goal is to, was to capture imagery of the quadcopter flying over the volcano, um, which really gives it kind of this bizarre sci-fi look. I mean, it actually, it looks kind of fake. <laughs> um, I always think of Bryce, you know, that old program. And what's really, and what you'll notice also is that the footage is incredibly stable. There are really crazy uh, thermals above a volcano. And in a lot of the footage, of the raw footage, you can see the, the quadcopter kind of fighting to stay in place. First of all, it's going from like negative 15 Celsius to who knows how hot, uh, back and forth as it flies over the volcano. Um, and it's being buffeted by all these, first of all, we had 20 to 30 knot winds, it was snowing often, um, and they performed really well. And that's really a testament to the gimbal technology that keeps these cameras stable. Um, this is, and this is still all sort of an experiment because we didn't actually know what would happen if you flew this close uh, to a volcano. So we're probably, um, you know, our telemetry told us we were about 70 meters up, but we were standing a mile away lower than that. So we're probably like 150 feet above the lava. It was really pretty special to, to be able to see these points of view. I mean, you know, aerial views of volcanoes are actually not that rare, but what's really rare, rare is wide-angle, low-altitude views of lava. And that's, what, that's where the drones uh, really excel. This part's sped up here. So again, this is all from a single flight. It was about a 14-minute flight, and I've kind of compressed it uh, for this. Um, and there's one more thing in this video. That's just, that's just for this audience. Um, so th this is actually that lava flow feeding into a lava tube. So how many of you, have you been to Hawaii and kind of hiked to the lava tubes? If you go underwater, you dive through lava tubes a lot. Um, this is the first time I'd ever seen any footage of lava going into a lava tube. And it was only because we could see it happening from the air and were able to fly really close to, to explore that. Thank you. Um, these cameras are shooting in 4K now, so actually most of the stills I have from this trip are, are frame grabs, and they, and they look pretty good. Now, one thing that's really special is um, special for tonight is that I put together uh, last night or this morning, depending on how you count, um, I put together this behind-the-scenes video. So I was shooting video constantly with a little uh, Sony RX100, which I carried around in my pocket all the time. Um, and, uh, and the idea was always to put together you know, a little mini documentary, which we never did. So this was a really good opportunity to put something together, together for you guys. Look at the lights. There's a lot of travel involved, it turns out. Funny that they would get, you know, get some of them. And of course, we had a lot more equipment this time. You know, we had to do live broadcasts. So there were, I mean, we had multiple large vehicles full of gear. We had to call the satellites over when we wanted to broadcast uh, for testing. So coordination was absolutely imperative uh, for, this, for this success. You can see all those, all those cases there. Now, these are ABC engineers who have been basically everywhere. You know, they, they cover like, I, I don't know, their stories are incredible. Um, and what was cool is they, you know, they basically have seen everything, but, um, but this was something totally different than, than anything they had seen uh, before. It's letting air out of the tires so that we can go uh, directly over all this packed snow. Baby. Oh, you are? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This first? is where I'm telling the producer oh, that, first. First, uh, yeah, first baby. Oh, that wow. we were going to have a baby in three weeks. <laughs> My wife's sitting in the front here. <laughs> so we, don't we did quite a bit of flying from the car as well, which is always fun. This is for the lazy pilots like me. Please return to home. Yeah.
All right, so apparently we got a little bit too close on the last flight because when we landed, we noticed that there is a, it's totally melted. Uh, because there's some really bad weather coming in and it will prevent us from getting out if we try to leave tomorrow. Oh, the wind is going faster than we are. Yeah. That was a live broadcast that was being rebroadcast. First time we that we got to see it. We are finally on a flight back to Reykjavik after being trapped for two days in central Iceland, which is not so bad. It actually took us a while to get out. <laughs> there it is. Thanks. Um, and uh, and this is a this is a very special. Um, I have not shown this except to one other group, uh, and it's not public. But we actually um, we landed one in the lava flow <laughs> um, for science, of course. And so this this is raw footage from um, from the second one, which was flying right above it. And the thing is, these quadcopters don't want to do things that that are bad. You know, they they if, if there's anything wrong, they pretty much say, "Up, oh, I'm going home," and they fly back home. So I had to get this to land, I had to say, okay, actually, you're home now, so why don't you land? And, um, and there it is, landing on the flow. Um, lava is up to around 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty hot. I actually thought it would burst into flames. You know, I had these grand visions. Um, but it sort of caught on fire slowly. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, what, that's what it did. And, um, and Ferdinand is flying the second one that you're seeing the footage from, and he's trying to stay as close to it as possible. But at some point, the quad just decided, up, uh, oh, I've had enough, and this is it. Um, now, trying to go somewhere. Um, and, uh, and luckily, he was able to regain control of it and, and pilot it home, uh, which is why we have this footage here. Um, this is the landing when it came home. And you'll notice Ferdinand, he can't just land it. He can't just bring it home and land it. He's got to make a game of it. No, no, no. No yeah! way! <laughs> <laughs> One's in the crater. One's in the crater. <laughs> oh, look at that. A lot of melt damage. Look at this. Yeah. The motors, are, the gimbal yeah. motors are all yeah, melted. Really. Everything is melted. Look Landing gear. Oh, the, even the back is still working. Oh. LED. That's bad. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. It's small. The gimbal's small. still working. <gasps> Can we keep this one? <laughs> <laughs> I actually brought the quad that was flying. We still have it. There's a sticker on it that says melted in volcano on top. And, um, and you can see them. I don't know if you can see it shiny here. So this is all, I'm, I'm, I'm totally amazed that this thing continued to work through what, you know, what we put it through. Um, just want to show the people who were involved. This is the Good Morning America crew with us. And of course, the local crew in Iceland. We had an Icelandic rescue team with us, making sure that everything was safe. We were operating under permit the whole time. Um, so it was really, in, I mean, such a, um, I mean, such a fortune really to be able to go to Iceland a couple of times and hang out by a volcano uh, twice in four months, um, and it really inspired me to do more. I mean, I, I actually just wrote my first book. It's very exciting. Um, it's a book. It's called Aerial Photography and Videography for Drones, and it it teaches people how to go from basically the very beginning to kind of intermediate stage. So how do you get in the air and capture things with 
with aerial flying cameras these days. Oh, thank you so much.